Since we last spoke, the Wall Street Journal, um, that well-known uh, purveyor of Russian disinformation, uh, has published an investigation uh, based on an as yet unpublished US intelligence community assessment and anonymous briefings from security officials from several European capitals, whoever they are. Um, maybe it's those, um, the beef eaters outside the Tower of London, you know, the security officials. But the uh, it, it concluded anyway that Vladimir Putin neither orchestrated nor wished for the death of Russian opposition activist Alexei Navalny in prison two months earlier. Um, it, it, quite why this is coming out now, I don't know. And it's very, very, very strange. Um, what's even stranger is that when Navalny's death was announced on February the 16th, um, there was an explosion of finger pointing and uh, accusations from Western figures and officials. Um, US President Joe Biden declared, uh, make no mistake, Putin is responsible for Navalny's death. And meanwhile, Navalny's widow, Yulia, um, accused Russian authorities of hiding his body um, as they were waiting for traces of yet more Novichok to disappear. Um, and she she made very very bold bold threats about how <clears throat> uh, we will tell you all about it soon. We will definitely find out who exactly carried out this crime and how. We will name names and show their faces. And yet, ten days later, on February uh, the twenty sixth, uh, Ukraine's military intelligence chief Budin. Oh, sorry, no, I think he's an outright military chief now, isn't he? Budinov um, avowedly disappointed everyone by announcing Navalny had in fact died as the result of a simple blood clot. Um, the US intelligence assessments relied upon by the Wall Street Journal reached the same conclusions. Now, quite why, again, this confirmation has come out two months later um, isn't clear. Although what's even weirder is that Budinov would try and shut down suggestions that, the, that Navalny's um, uh, death was a murder. Because, I mean, number one, right, since the very start of the invasion of Ukraine, um, officials in Kiev have been demanding that the 300 billion in assets seized by Western financial institutions from Russian oligarchs be given to them for the purposes of reconstruction and, and purchasing ever more weapons um, and, and, and ammunition. Um, but even more curiously, the, the, these are the same elements, the Ukrainian government and Western spying agencies, who, since the start of this in February 2022, have been lying to us on a daily basis, yeah. um, often to an intelligence insulting degree, claiming, for instance, that Russia was at one point in Bakhmut fighting with shovels. I right. uh, remember that. Um, and then uh, they also claimed that Russia blew up its own Nord Stream pipeline, um, which they spent a large amount of money and time constructing. Um, uh, but, but yet they don't want us to believe these same sources who told us all this rubbish that Navalny was murdered. They really don't want us to believe that. Um, that's very, very, very strange. Um, it's particularly strange given in the immediate aftermath of Navalny's death, there was a huge push to implement a quote-unquote Navalny Act, yeah. which would have given um, uh, the Ukraine all of the, se the seized Russian assets. So Budinov electively sabotaged this campaign to give Ukraine what they want and arguably urgently need. Yeah. Why? Yeah. This is very, very odd. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, I was so rudely interrupted by technical issues last time. Um, it was quite strange that at the forefront of this uh, push for Navalny Act was Bill Browder, who's this uh, extremely corrupt fraudster who made an enormous amount of money in Russia during the 90s when it was while it was being raped and pillaged under shock therapy, Western imposed shock therapy. And then once he became persona non grata and Putin actually started enforcing regulations and rules and forcing people to pay their taxes, um, he suddenly became an anti-Putin, anti-corruption campaigner in the West. Um, he's very well connected. There's a lot of suggestions that he has ties to MI, Britain's MI6 um, or the CIA. And there was that documentary about him that it was attempting to paint a favorable view but as the as the documentarian learned more and more about him what was that documentary called oh that was but the the, the, Mag, the magnitsky act yeah the streams made by my, my my dear friend andre nekrasov who right. is a uh, leading dissident um uh, the russian um, opposition activist 
um, yeah, so the the the, um, uh, the 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 crux of the film was that he wanted to make a dramatization of what Browder claimed happened, which is that his companies were seized by Russian authorities in order to uh, pull off a two hundred and thirty million tax fraud, and then his crusading friend and lawyer Sergei Magnitsky. Uh, uncovered the fraud, uh, reported it to authorities, but was jailed and then tortured to death in prison for his courageous whistleblowing. Um, In reality, Magnitsky was a corrupt accountant um, who ended up in jail for assisting Browder's crooked financial schemes. But um, Nekrasov set out to make a film about this and very quickly found that it was complete rubbish and lies. Um, And uh, Browder, it was meant to premiere at the European Parliament, but Browder had it um, pulled using lawfare tactics and it's it, you can find it on BitChute and other kind of rather obscure video mm. streaming websites it's not like online anywhere else yeah uh, the, the cover up uh, continues to this day but the, so the fact that he was involved suggests that there was a a, a very real sense that, that this would succeed um, and then Budinov sabotaged it again why um, in my latest uh, article from Minpress at, at its conclusion uh, I draw uh, the, the very clear, this is, to my mind, it's a very clear comparison. Um, our dear friend James Le Measurer, the veteran Britain, uh, British military intelligence operative and mercenary um, who uh, was heavily involved in the Syrian dirty war, mm. created the White Helmets, much beloved by uh, Netflix and the uh, the mainstream media. This was an allegedly a humanitarian... And Israel. Oh, and Israel as well. Yeah, they were fond of them. They, well, they, they, you know, when uh, they were evacuated, they, Israel evacuated them out of out of Syria. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. No, I gather that they're, um, they're, 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 they're living in a series of refugee camps now, kind of dotted around mm. like West Asia. Yeah. No one really wants anything to do with them. No. Um, uh, but but, but yeah, the, the point is, is yeah, so the White Helmets were presented as, the, as these uh, courageous humanitarians who rescued children from rubble um, from government, created by government airstrikes. Uh, the reality was a lot darker, mm. um, actually, in terms of what they were doing they were a a a core propaganda construct of british intelligence that was concerned with sabotaging um official probes into alleged chemical weapons attacks and staging chemical weapons attacks Uh, and there's videos of some of their members you know standing around and smiling as children are beheaded and and things of that nature i actually caught um was this maybe 2017 or 2016 um there was a uh a white helmets uh you know um what are those things called the uh impromptu concert at grand central station in new york city oh really and uh somebody who happened to belong to a communist party was um a violinist i believe and he was sent an invitation to um you know perform um, and so he he leaked that to the Communist Party, and um, I was invited as media to cover their disruption. So I filmed I filmed the you know the concert and it being disrupted with signs and chants and whatnot. And uh, you know three weeks later, um, they completely redid the audio. Uh, they put out the video. They completely redid the audio. Um, used super close up shots of all the you know performers because everything else was totally unusable but they blatantly deceptively edited what happened and it's like look if they're gonna deceptively edit things in grand central station you don't think that they're doing that in in syria yeah, you know? yeah that's that's that, that, that's that's amazing i didn't know that but the, i think that yeah the, in effect for many years during the syrian dirty war the white helmets were unimpeachable and yeah. they were like all over the media and um they're, they're held up as heroes of the quote-unquote revolution, i.e. Western proxy war and regime change effort in Damascus. And um, when independent journalists um, started actually digging in, um, including journalists who visited Syria, actually started digging into this group, they they discovered this rather darker uh, side to them. Yeah. Um, and uh, there were the, the international governments who were funding um, this th- th- this actually started looking into it as well and started backing off because it was quite clear that there was an enormous amount of money being sent to um, James the Measurer's Mayday Rescue Company and it was not clear where it was going and what it was being spent on and who it was being given to. Um, uh, And so, uh, and there was also a stream of leaks from the OPCW, the Organization for the Prevention of Chemical Weapons, um, which showed quite clearly that the, 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 
the White Helmets and the Measurer himself were involved in sabotaging or um, or influencing OPCW probes in order to trigger Western intervention in Syria. Right. So this all rather comes to a head in November 2019 when um, at, uh, very abruptly, he in, in the early hours of the morning, uh, he falls from the window of his very lavish apartment in Istanbul, where he lived with his wife, the avowed MI6 officer, Emma Winberg. Mm. Now, in the immediate aftermath of this, a large number of sources blamed Russia and claimed it was a Kremlin hit job. Uh, I mean, this was a pretty safe option at the time, as as it is now. Mm. Um, uh, the, P- Putin and and the and just Russia as this nebulous concept were being blamed for the weather. Yeah, like quite literally, yeah. they were being blamed for everything. And we were told that they were, they were weaponizing dolphins and all this other other yeah. rubbish, and and so this it was a safe bet to blame Russia for the measure's death. You could point to the fact that RT had done a lot of critical reporting mm-hmm. on the on the on the white helmets, um, and so one of the the sources that that initially blamed Russia for the measure's death is a, a long time BBC journalist called Mark Urban. He is, apart f- um, from uh, a time spent in the British Army when he was an associate and friend of uh, Pablo Miller, who was Sergei Skripal, the GRU defector's um, recruiter and handler and also neighbour in mm. Salisbury. Um, you just uh, coincidence. I mean, Urban, of course, managed to spend the year before Skripal was poisoned interviewing him at home in Salisbury but of course Pablo Miller had nothing to do with this I'm sure um, anyway uh, so yes Urban is a very well connected quite spooky uh, mainstream journalist who's very well connected in western intelligence security and defence quote unquote spheres and he I- I explicitly in a series of tweets stated that it, it is vital to ascertain whether there was state involvement and he also added and this is extremely suspicious <clears throat> based on a former colleague, whether that's of Urban's or the measurers isn't clear, told Urban that they knew the measurer's apartment well Mm. and it was impossible to simply fall, inverted commas, this was in the tweet, from that balcony. And they strongly suspected foul play as a result. Um, Subsequent to this, these posts were deleted due to Urban allegedly receiving quote-unquote new information mm. um was that new information and the apartment MS- was remodeled yeah clearly. yes yeah, yeah that new information in my six officials saying mark what are you doing yeah you idiot right um because again uh, and thereafter we it, the the line that he'd committed suicide was stuck to and stuck to very rigidly and we have subsequently been told by a variety of sources including a a uh, libel and and error strewn BBC series called just called May Day and also a very lengthy article uh, profile of the measure in the Guardian yeah that he was he was very stressed out due to Russian disinformation so the uh, the British Army veteran took his own life because Russian disinformation because there's naughty yeah. nasty Russians telling lies about him which are completely untrue um, and the point is is that uh, much like Navalny it would have been the safest thing in the world to just claim that this was Russia. The act of, but, act, but, but it's clear that the powers that be did not want the measurer's death being looked at as a murder. Right. Much like it's clear that the, C, the CIA and the Ukraine don't want Navalny's death looked as a murder, looked at as a murder. So we must ask ourselves why. So just in the course of a month, it's gone from. Putin murdered Navalny to there's nothing to see here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and <clears throat> yes, I might add that uh, following um, the measurer's death, the Turkish me- media um, published a number of extremely damaging reports. One one article suggested that in the days leading up to his death, James the measurer and his wife, Emma Winberg, again, uh, long-time MI6 officer, uh, sorry, Emma, um, th- uh, they fought violently outside a restaurant in Istanbul. Mm. Why? Uh, And then also another even more um, explosive um, article in the Daily Sabah, which is very much connected to the the Turkish... It's Turkish, yeah. Yeah, Turkish. It's it's, it's basically a Turkish government mouthpiece. It stated that the measurer, a quote-unquote British spy, 
was likely running away from someone at the time of his death. And it had all sorts of other incriminating details, such as Winberg having changed her story repeatedly, mm -hmm. uh, acting very suspiciously, claiming to have taken multiple sleeping pills, but then this, which had no effect on her. And she was, uh, and then when when they burst into into their apartment um, after finding the measurer's body on the floor, she was allegedly shoveling money into bags. Mm. Uh, which is precisely what you would do if you are in a state of shock and grief about the death of your the the the, the, the sudden unexpected suicide of your husband. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, yeah the, the parallels are quite clear. I'm not sure what to make of it. Indeed, I, I would invite viewers to make of that what they will. But it, it, it is, to say the least, deeply suspicious that the Ukrainians and the US intelligence don't want Navalny, another Western asset who'd rather right. fallen from grace, who may have known too much, was not getting out of prison anytime soon, yeah. having flown back at his wife's insistence, that because you have a, a hero's welcome at the airport, um, something that I'm familiar with uh, in my, <laughs> my home my, my home country of the UK those those counter-terror police were very excited to see me yeah uh, like it was almost coming up for a year now but they but yeah the, so um again not not sure what to what to make of it but it's something to it's something I would ask people to look at and bear in mind